Four days after this couple's newborn baby passed away, a call from the hospital turned their world upside down. When the story of Katie and Josh circulated the internet, it left many in tears. It was also a source of inspiration to bereaved parents and those looking for the fruit of the womb. This couple, however, had a beautiful and sweet beginning to their relationship before everything went sour. The duo had met while in college, and Katie was the one who fell in love first. I had seen him for the first time in the school's library, and I just knew he had to be mine, Katie explained. So the next day, she went into the library and found Josh sitting in a corner. So she sat next to him and started a conversation. Interestingly, Josh responded positively, and they spoke as if they had been friends for ages. But when Katie was hoping he would ask for a contact, he just got up, shook her hands, and left. But Katie didn't take offense, and she tried her luck again. A few days later, she ran into him at the library again. She flashed a grin and waved at him, but he just walked past her. Katie was pissed and devastated. They were laughing a few days ago, and now he just walked past her like she didn't even exist. Didn't he see me? Where was he even rushing to? Katie thought. So she concluded he didn't care and halted the chase. She stopped going to the library, and for weeks, neither of them set eyes on each other until one fateful day. That day, Katie had gone into one restaurant on campus, and she met Josh there. This time, he walked up to her, smiling like a boy on a swing. Hey, you! I've been looking everywhere for you. You stopped coming to the library, he said. He wasn't done talking when Katie angrily said, I waved at you the other day and you just walked past me. That was when Josh apologized and said he ran into some kind of trouble and needed to sort it out. Let me make it up to you, he said. How? Katie asked. Instead of buying food, I am just heading home. I will make you a special delicacy. You will never find it in any restaurant. I promise. Katie was phased. What did he take her for? Who asked a girl to come over the first time, she thought. Yet she said, yes, that would be great. Then they got into the car. Throughout the drive, all Katie could hear in her head was, get down now. This is wrong. Please get down. Yet she just sat there, staring at this man that had stolen her heart away. But did she even mean anything to him? Once home, Josh made the super delicacy and Katie ate to her fill. Everything he did made her fall even more. Later after eating, they just kept talking and laughing wholeheartedly. One thing led to another, and soon they were in each other's arms. It was an unforgettable and passionate moment. You are different. I want you, Josh said, and Katie smiled. And that was the beginning of their relationship. Not long after this, they got married and decided to start a family. In September 2014, the couple received very beautiful news after a visit to the hospital. The doctor called to inform them Katie was three weeks pregnant. Both of them were thrilled at the idea of becoming parents. Unfortunately, in some months, terror and regret would fill this household. As required, Katie and Josh visited the hospital for prenatal care. All through this period, the doctors noticed nothing wrong with the pregnancy, until the 20th week scan. In January 2015, we went in for the 20th week scan, and the doctor said there was something wrong with the baby. They said his neck was thickened, and his feet appeared clogged. All this pointed to the fact the baby had a genetic condition. What was frightening was the fact that the doctors couldn't say exactly what it was, so we had to wait until the baby came out. Josh and I didn't know what to expect. We didn't know whether to be hopeful. We just felt very empty, Katie recounted. After this sad discovery, Katie and Josh visited the hospital frequently, as the doctors needed to monitor the boy. One night, Katie woke Josh up and said, What if he doesn't make it? Why would you say a thing like that? Josh whispered. I am scared I will never be myself again if anything happens to him, Katie confessed. But the truth is, we never know how strong we are, until being strong is the only choice we have. And this woman soon learned this in the most tragic yet beautiful way. Weeks continued to pass by, and the couple's worry only intensified. Was there any hope for their baby? Soon enough, the truth showed itself. In the 39th week, Katie was induced into labor, and she gave birth to their son, Dewey, who weighed about 4 pounds. Immediately after his birth, the boy was whisked off to the ICU, 
while the doctors delivered grave news to his parents. They diagnosed the boy with chromosome translocation, clogged feet, and a webbed neck. His condition was so rare that the doctors weren't even sure of its consequence. They couldn't tell whether he could recover, and if not, they couldn't say how much time he had left. It was a torture, and we just lived in fear after his birth. We were told not to get our hopes high, but at the same time, it felt like there was a very slight chance he could make it, Josh said. Unfortunately, as time passed, Dewey developed more health issues. In September 2015, poor Dewey was wheeled to the theater room for a routine surgery so he could have a feeding tube. When the stated time for the operation elapsed, his parents, who were waiting for him outdoors, began to panic. Why hadn't any doctor come out yet? Why was the surgery taking so long? I felt it within my soul that something had gone wrong. I turned to Josh and asked him why they were taking too long. Don't worry, our baby is fine and we will see him soon, Josh told his devastated wife. It was just right then that they saw one of the surgeons coming out of the theater room. When I saw the surgeon, I knew our boy had lost the fight. It hurt so much, I was breathless, Katie recounted. Just like she had assumed, the doctor told them their baby was gone. I am sorry about this. The boy had a peaceful look on his face as life departed him. I thought I should let you know that, the doctor told them. You see, while the surgeons were carrying out the surgery, Dewey's heart failed him and he died on the operating table. His parents, as expected, were devastated, yet they organized a little party to celebrate the boy's life on earth. When the party was over, Katie and Josh returned to their rooms with a heart filled with fear. What was next for them now? Neither of them knew, but they soon received a call from the hospital that turned their lives upside down. Two months later, in November 2015, Katie and her husband found themselves praying for another child. They wanted to give the child all the love and attention they hadn't been able to give Dewey. And soon, their prayer got answered when they were least expecting. It started with a phone call. One nurse where Dewey had been born called to say a baby, Brax, needed a home. Baby Brax had chronic respiratory failure, pulmonary hypertension, and tracheomalacia. His parents couldn't afford his medical bills or give him the life he deserved, so they made the painful decision to give him away. Katie and Josh didn't even think before they accepted to be the boy's parents. It was the right thing to do. It just felt like we were saving Dewey, Josh said. Four days later, Katie and Josh met Brax, and they connected with him right away. When we held him, he smiled so beautifully. He was a happy boy, and we were ready to do anything to make sure that smile never ceased from his face. They made moves to foster him, and in September 2017, they legally adopted little Brax. Over time, the boy's condition improved, and he is now as healthy as a horse. Katie and Josh have since continued to cater for Brax, and they love him deeply. Although this couple still misses Dewey, they're glad he is no longer suffering. Through his loss, they were able to meet another child, who has now filled all voids in their heart. What are your thoughts on Brax's adoption?